Hi everybody, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining me for this prayerful pause of the pastor, a few minutes to think of something greater than ourselves. I've been thinking a lot lately about um, what matters and what doesn't. And I seem to come back to um, a more fundamental question. Instead of what matters, it's really about why does it matter? Why does something matter to you and something else doesn't? Why do I think something is important that other people don't? Why do you? Yes, it's important to think about what matters to us. But why does it matter? So I want you to think of something that matters to you. Could be family or something, um, a relationship. It could be something concrete, your home. It could be um, something a little more amorphous like a value. Justice matters to you or trust matters or love matters. God matters. What is it? And, you know, pick one of them. Okay, take a few seconds. Zero in. You got the one? Okay, hold that in your mind for a minute and ask yourself, why does that matter? Why does it matter to you? I think I think the important questions for us all have to do with why, not with what or who or how. If we are upset about something, why are we upset? If we are devoted to something or someone, why are we devoted? I grew up in a family where one of the, you know, every family has these phrases or these um, slogans that are important. I think I've shared with you before that um, from my dad, it was the smart person always asks why. Well, you know, for a two-year-old, that's a different kind of why than it is, I think, when, when we are mature. And then our questions around why have to do with what's underlying it. Why is this important? Why is it important to me to be a woman of faith? Why is it important that I stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves? It's not just that I do it. It's not just that it's important, but why is it important? For me, a lot of it, of course, comes back to my values, my faith. If I want to live more like Jesus, then I want to adopt the things that are important to him. I want them to be important to me. That's part of the why. But it's also because of a way that I want to live, a way that I choose to be. I want to be fighting for what's right. And then there's the, no, the next level of why. Why do I want to be on the, the side of what's right? What are the whys in your life? I think we don't look at that enough. Hopefully, though, if we look at it, if we start asking ourselves about the whys, then we can understand that other people have different whys, that their whys are just as important to them as my whys are to me. And maybe it's the whys that make us wise. Think about that. It could be the whys that make us wise. Because if we can understand why we do something, the wisdom that we get along that journey can lead us to deeper understanding of who we are and whose we are and how we relate 
not only to each other, but to God and how God relates to us. And it might even end up helping us change our entire definition of who and what God is. Just a thought for today, to be looking at the why we do what we do, why we say, think, feel, why we are the way we are, why we make the choices we do, and how does that fit in with our faith, or does it? All right, everybody, thanks for this time. I hope it's been enough to prompt you to think of something greater than yourself, not only for this chunk of time, but throughout the day. Carry it with you. I'm Pastor Deb Swift of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York. Thank you for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. We'll see you next time, and until then, God bless. Take care. Figure out the whys. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.